Hello guys, good evening and welcome you all to the discussion on the topic of ectopic pregnancy. Isa na naman ito sa uh, most important topics that we have under the subject maternal and child health nursing. So this would be applicable for our uh, graduates who are reviewing right now and also for the second year students natin on uh, the second semester. Uh, this would be very, very helpful for you. So I welcome you all to this discussion. So the concept of ectopic pregnancy. So when we say ectopic pregnancy class, this is otherwise known as a tubal pregnancy. Okay. So what happens in ectopic pregnancy is that the implantation of a zygote uh, does not happen in the uterus. Okay. Because supposedly or normally the zygote implants inside the uterus and normally it is located at the fundus or the higher part of the uterus. Unfortunately, there are some instances where in a zygote um, implants outside the uterus and the condition is what we call as ectopic pregnancy. So commonly, um, it is uh, located or ectopic pregnancy implants in the fallopian tube and to be specific or to be more specific in the ampulla, uh, it is um, a specific portion of your fallopian tube. Well, uh, ectopic pregnancy can also occur on other parts or can, can also implant on other parts of the female reproductive organ like the cervix, the ovary, and in, more, in a very uh, rare case, this can actually be also implanted in the intestine. Uh, and this is what we call as in the Adele Kaliteri book, we call it abdominal pregnancy, okay? However, uh, the most common site of uh, ectopic pregnancy is the is in the ampulla of the fallopian tube. Okay, now what are the causes of uh, ectopic pregnancy? Uh, we have actually various of causes. So we have first adhesion of the fallopian tube from a previous infection, like a chronic salpingitis or the inflammation of um, the fallopian tube, which actually leads to pelvic inflammatory disease or the PID. And this is actually the most common cause. And another is the congenital malformations. Uh, scarring can also uh, lead to ectopic pregnancy. Uh, when we say scars, this has been caused by, example, tubal, tubal surgeries uh, caused by uh, salpingitis. Another also is a uterine tumor, which presses the uh, proximal end of the tube. And of course, if a previous ectopic pregnancy has occurred that can also lead to another case or recurrence of ectopic pregnancy. But remember, because this has been um, mis, um, misconceived before that um, oral contraceptives may cause ectopic pregnancy, that's not true because um, for unknown reason, oral contraceptives actually uh, which when, when it is used before pregnancy, it actually reduces the case or the incidence of possible ectopic pregnancy. So remember, uh, this is a very, very sensitive and this is a very highlight for this discussion that oral contraceptives actually do not cause ectopic pregnancy. Remember that one. Okay, now, such as say, for example, we have here a practice question. Anna, a seven-week pregnant, was diagnosed of ectopic pregnancy. You know that which of the following did not cause this condition? A, salpingitis, a chronic salpingitis, letter B, con congenital malformations, letter C, scars from tubal surgery, and letter D, oral contraceptives. Well, going back to our um, causes, adhesions is true, congenital malformations is true, scars, uterine tumor, previous ectopic pregnancy, Except for, of course, the correct answer here is letter D, oral contraceptives. And you already know that one. Now, let's talk about your nursing assessment. So what are those things that we will be um, note, note, noting on our patients or we will be uh, taking a very serious uh, assessment onto our patients? First is that, ito po, this is a very... Um, this is very pathognomonic for our ectopic pregnancy. Sudden unilateral lower abdominal quadrant pain, which 
is defined by the book as knife-like or stabbing pain. Remember that? It's very, very painful. Or the pain is severe. It's knife-like. Parang uh, sinasaksak sa pasyente. It's like a stabbing pain. And also, there is a board-like abdomen. So matigas, naninigas ang ating uh, lower abdomen ng ating patient. Again, it's the knife-like uh, pain, stabbing pain, severe pain no, in the lower abdominal quadrant. And also, we have the board-like abdomen. Remember, we talking about your bleeding. At start of your uh, ectopic pregnancy, there is actually a minimal vaginal bleeding. No, and the color for this one, which is also very pathognomonic for fallopian tube because this is also uh, compared to other complications of pregnancy like placenta previa and abruptio placenta. Remember that it is a dark red minimal vaginal bleeding. But when rupture actually occurs, remember that there is a possible signs for shock or hemorrhage. That's why we must be very careful with these um, signs and symptoms. Also, colon sign may occur. Uh, what do we mean by colon sign? Colon sign is actually the accumulation of um, of the uh, blood you know, in the peri-umbilical area, which is a very, very pathognomonic sign for uh, ectopic pregnancy. Also, colon sign occurs uh, in your hemorrhagic, uh, acute hemorrhagic pancreatitis. Remember that one. And also, uh, mayroon rin possibility na magkaroon ng shoulder pain si patient is because of the pressure na ibinibigay sa kanyang phrenic nerve. Okay? Shoulder pain may also occur. Remember that one. Remember the nursing assessment. Balikan po natin knife-like pain or stabbing pain. Board-like abdomen. Vaginal bleeding na dark red which is minimal at first but kapag nag uh, we have to remember and we have to take note for signs and symptoms of shock or hemorrhage. And also, colon sign may also occur or may also be um, assessed on our patients. And also, remember that pwede rin magkaroon ng shoulder pain is because of the pressure sa ating phrenic nerve. Now, let's proceed to your management. How do we manage our patients sa ectopic pregnancy? Well, we will be differentiating our management into two. First, let's talk about the unruptured ectopic pregnancy. Kapag hindi pa daw mag-rupture, what are we going to do? Basically, remember, kapag unruptured pa ang ating ectopic pregnancy, remember, all or most of our management is more of medical management, not so pa of your surgical management. Okay, first, we're going to give a methotrexate, which is a potent anti-metabolite, or this is also actually an anti-cancer drug. And you also need to prepare for this one, uh, leucovorin, which is an antidote for methotrexate. Okay, this is actually, uh, leucovorin has an, an antidote effect no, for methotrexate toxicity. That's why you need to prepare it also. Now, another is uh, you also need to prepare for hysterosalpingogram or basically the, 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 the ultrasound of the uterus and also the fallopian tube, okay? Or these are um, the, the diagnostic uh, tests that should be done after you have given the methotrexate and leucovarine. Now, remember that our goal here is actually to achieve a negative titer HCG. And take note that in giving your methotrexate, because there is a rapid growth, mabilis po ang paglaki ng ating zygote, okay? Now, the methotrexate, is actually directly drawn into the um, ectopic pregnancy site. You have to remember that. Okay, we can we can also give mefepristone. This is a potent also abortive patient drug to also halt no the growth of the uh, of the zygote. Okay, remember that one for the enraptured um, ectopic pregnancy. We give methotrexate, leucovorin, and we also prepare for hysterosalpingogram, and we can also give mifepristone. That is for unruptured. Now, let's proceed to your ruptured um, ectopic pregnancy. Remember, if sa ating unruptured, our management is focused on uh, medical. It's non-surgical in nature. Now, in our ruptured ectopic pregnancy, dito naman po magkakaroon tayo, we will be focusing more on the, yes, medical, and then we will also be having our surgical management. First, we... Uh, immediately proceed kapag ruptured na remember 
Remember, going back to our nursing assessment, you need to remember that the most important nursing consideration dito is to avoid hypovolemic shock. That's why you immediately um, make or you immediately um, start your IV infusion and then also magbibigay na rin tayo ng blood no? for uh, immediate blood transfusion. Okay, magbibigay na tayo dyan ng blood. Of course, following the cross-matching and everything and also before that, gagawa muna tayo ng mga blood tests like your CBC, hemoglobin, and hematocrit count, and also um, cross-matching of blood. Now, after that one, after giving your immediate blood transfusion, we will also conduct laparoscopic repair of the fallopian tube. Okay? Now, there will be a repair of your fallopian tube. According to the military book, simply lang, if the fallopian tube is still okay, subject for repair or car repair, repair pa siya, then we do the fallopian tube repair. Upon the other hand, kapag hindi na, last example, really, it has been damaged, no? Then, a removal of the tube can be done or that's what we call as your salpingectomy, okay? That is the removal of your fallopian tube. Remember, the most important consideration here is that in your ectopic pregnancy, the problem in your fallopian tube is um, unilateral. Ibig sabihin, it is just the other side of the uh, fallopian tube that's been damaged. So what's what's important for us to take note is that, because this has been asked in the board exam also previously, um, after ectopic pregnancy, after management of ectopic pregnancy, our patient is actually 50% sterile. So remember that one, that your patient will become 50% sterile. So that's the management of your unruptured, unruptured ectopic pregnancy. So that ends our lecture on ectopic pregnancy. That's very short and that's very, very comprehensive.